my name is Elizabeth McGill. I'm from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Um, and what I'm going to do today is go through a presentation about what we think a systems approach can do for you. Um, and so I'm going to start with just kind of an introduction to systems thinking and then walk through an example. And that example is going to come from um, a local alcohol policy intervention. Our work is funded by the National Institute for Health Research, the School for Public Health Research. And that's a partnership between eight academic centers across England. And today this video is being presented on behalf of the wider systems guidance team, uh, the names of all of which you can see here on the slide. So what we're doing is we're trying to produce guidance for uh, what we're calling as a shorthand local practitioners, but really we mean anybody that's working in a local setting, on how they might want to incorporate a systems perspective into the planning and evaluation of that, their activities. So we're mostly public health researchers, but we take public health to mean very much the wider determinants of health. So be it planning, transport, pl uh, licensing, that sort of thing. And so we hope that the guidance will be of use to you, even if you're not a public health practitioner. Um, so in creating the guidance, what we've done is we've conducted a consultation exercise, we've conducted a literature review, interviews, and workshops to develop our approach. So in this presentation, I'm going to spoke, uh, speak specifically about how we evaluate our activities from a systems perspective. And what I want to start out by going through is what we think are some of the shortcomings of a more traditional approach to evaluation. I then want to introduce the idea of systems thinking and why we think it might have some value for you working at the local level. And then I want to end up by going through an example of an evaluation that we've conducted from a systems perspective. So I'm going to start out by outlining what we see as a fairly traditional approach to evaluation, particularly for you if you're working at the local level. So what happens is you have your intervention, and then you take measurements before and after your intervention. Ideally, you do the exact same thing in a comparison area. If you've got a little bit more time and resource, you might also conduct something called a process evaluation alongside of that. And so what that means is you might be looking at how the intervention gets implemented, kind of how it embeds within its local context, and kind of pick up a little bit about how and why it's working. And then finally, if you've got a little bit more resource, perhaps a little bit more time, you might also begin to get a sense of the context into which uh, this intervention is being implemented and kind of get an understanding of what else is happening around you. The thing is with this kind of evaluation is that it tends to proceed in a fairly linear way. So what I mean by that is you often start with the you know, one or two outcomes that you're really interested in, um, and then you take all of your measurements, and, and that's pretty much the end of it. So we know that when you do evaluations like this, when they're done well, they're very good at minimizing bias, and they're really good at answering questions like, what works? And if you incorporate that kind of process evaluation, they also allow us to answer things about how something works or why something works. But we think there is actually quite a few number of limitations of this, particularly for you if you're working at the local level. So the first is that there's often not a very good kind of acknowledgement of the broader system or the context into which that intervention is implemented. And so yes, you might have had kind of a cursory understanding of the context, but what you're not really getting at is what are all those other activities that are happening around, around side kind of the activity that you're trying to do. We also find that this concept of just an intervention is quite hard. Um, so when I presented it in the previous slide, the intervention is even put into a little box. And the challenge with that is it makes it look like the intervention is something that's very static. Um, sometimes this is fine. Sometimes we get kind of a new policy or a brand new service introduced and we can say neatly that is an intervention or a new activity in the system. But oftentimes in local settings, what happens is things change and they kind of morph slowly over time. Um, and so we don't really get to see those sorts of changes. Another child, uh, kind of problem with, with this more traditional approach to evaluation is this idea of primary outcomes that we can measure at very specific time points. Um, so often we think when we're designing an intervention or an activity that there are going to be certain outcomes that we're going to see and that we're going to see those at specific time points. But what we know in reality is that oftentimes either these impacts don't materialize, they don't materialize when we thought they were going to materialize, or actually we get completely unanticipated outcomes. And our traditional evaluation isn't particularly well set up to actually capture any of those. A fourth limitation with this kind of more traditional approach to evaluation is that it doesn't give us a lot of time to test out alternative scenarios that are linked to incremental decisions or developments. And so what I mean by that is often what happens is when we implement an intervention, we slowly start to change it as we start to get feedback and we start to learn about how the intervention is working. But if we prevent, present the intervention kind of as something very static and very um, something that we can kind of neatly box off, we don't actually get to test out how all of those different kind of incremental changes actually are impacting us. 
And then the final limitation is something that we call the crisis of replicability. So this is just a really fancy way of saying, essentially, what happens is sometimes we implement intervention in, a, in one area, we get an effect size, we go do the exact same thing in another area, but actually what we do is we get very different effect sizes. And then we're kind of less scratching our heads saying, what was the learning that we could transfer from one area to another area? What are those more generalizable or more transferable findings? So what we're proposing within this guidance um, is for the, those that are working at the local level might wish to start taking what's called a systems approach to your work. Um, so we know that all those that work, so we know kind of the world of local governments and the world of um, local environments is very complex because it's social real world environments. And often what happens in kind of response to this complexity and these challenges of working in very complex social environments is that researchers and particularly evaluators try to come up with ever kind of fancier methods of trying to understand the sort of change that's going on within, within their context. And often this is very appropriate. Um, but what we're really trying to do within this guidance is not so much say that you need to find a very brand new way of working, but perhaps what you need is a new way of thinking. And so our main aim within this guidance is to promote a new way of thinking. Um, and so that new way of thinking, we're calling it systems thinking. Um, and essentially at its core, systems thinking ha has the following principles. That nothing that you do is done in a vacuum, that each activity connects with the other activities that are taking place within that broader context or within that broader system, that other people or organizations, what we call actors, influence what you're doing, and that all of this can change what you do and what impacts are occurring. Um, and we don't think that this is probably particularly new for you, but what we're trying to do with the guidance is to simply give you new language and perhaps a new different, uh, different kind of ways of thinking and structuring both your thought processes and your evaluation methods. What we're advocating is something that's called a complex systems approach. And this may be a term that you're already familiar with. I think though it's useful to start on what is a definition of a system. And there are a whole lot of these definitions out there, but we particularly like one from Danella Meadows. So she defines a system as a set of things, be it people, cells, molecules, or whatever, that are interconnected in such a way that they produce their own pattern of behavior over time. And what's really at the core kind of of these definitions about systems is this emphasis on the relationships and the interactions between different systems system elements and the way that they interact with each other, how it gives rise to different kinds of outcomes, many of which might not be predictable. Um, systems thinking is not new, it's got ancient roots, but it's been more recently developed in public health and then much more recently kind of developed to the, for those that are working at the local setting. In addition to drawing on systems thinking, we've been drawing on something called complexity theory or the complexity sciences. So the complexity sciences we can locate within that broader field of systems thinking. And really at its heart, system sciences are kind of the ideas and the theories that are useful for addressing the non-linearity and the dynamicism of real world systems. So the, this bit about dynamicism is really important, that our, our, the systems and the environments in which we work are not static entities, that they change over time. They're constantly changing and adapting. We think that it might also be useful to start thinking through the different types of interventions that we can evaluate from a systems perspective. Um, and on this slide, I've listed three different types of, eva of evaluations that we could do. And it just should be noted that the, the boundaries between these are quite fuzzy, so it's not quite as neat as this slide makes it out to be. But the first thing that we might want to do is evaluate a fairly narrowly focused intervention or a change in the system. So a good example of this might be something like dimming the street lighting. Um, so we know that dimming street lighting, um, it might be introduced as a way of saving energy. But we could then also hypothesize that a change like this is going to have a kind of a wide range of other impacts. So for example, it might change perceptions of public safety, it might have changes on crime and antisocial behavior, on road traffic behavior. Um, and it also might lead to pushback from local residents, perhaps if they don't like the policy, or even local politicians if they're starting to get pushback from their residents. If it's being used as a measure to save money, that money could then perhaps be spent elsewhere. And then there are gonna be impacts of how that money is spent. So if we start kind of broadening out our perspective, what we see is that a systems perspective allows us to ask very different types of questions and more um, types of questions. We can also evaluate what are called um, whole system interventions. Um, and so what these are, are where you try to change multiple points of a system in one go. And an example of this might be something like an urban regeneration activity. Um, and in these cases, what you can do is you can do evaluations that either look at kind of individual components of a broader program or look at the overall impacts of that program from a systems perspective. And then an evaluation might also focus on how different stakeholders involved have worked together. So what helps or hinders joint working and what it achieves. 
And so this takes us to our third type of systems level evaluation, which is evaluating system level change in decision making processes. And once again, um, this kind of evaluation might consider the complexities of achieving this kind of change and the complex way that the system responds to these changes. So while this presentation is mostly focused on evaluation, I just want to step back for a moment and note that we can also do other things with a systems perspective. So a systems perspective is really helpful for us to understand problems and identify opportunities for looking for solutions or kind of levers of change within systems. And we often do this by drawing together a whole wide range of stakeholders um, who then come together and look at the same issue from their multitude of different perspectives. And what meetings like this often uh, result in is a large system map. And simply what a system map is, is a diagram of a particular issue that maps out all the various different influences on that issue. We can then use that system map or that kind of that intricate diagram to then hypothesize different change, different scenarios. So we can ask ourselves, what would happen if part of the system changed? And this can be done either through kind of thought experiments or by using more formal modeling techniques. So I don't want to discuss systems approaches or methods particularly in detail. Um, and this is very much the a area that's undergoing development. And what often happens is that people combine different methods or they're innovating in this area. Um, and the level of technical expertise that's required to apply systems thinking really does vary depending on the, the method that you're choosing. As with other forms of research, um, there are some, some methods that require quite a bit of technical expertise that are fairly resource intensive. But on the other hand, there are some methods that are more kind of pragmatic and low resource. What I'm now going to do in the remainder of the presentation is go through an example that uses a more kind of qualitative and pragmatic approach to evaluating something from a systems perspective. So in the UK, a lot of environmental interventions to address alcohol consumption are created and implemented at the local level. Um, and many of these interventions try to change to kind of the retail and the social environments in which alcohol is both purchased and then consumed. And many of these are small scale and they're implemented at the local level. But because we know that the local environment is very complex, we think there is a value of potentially evaluating um, these sorts of interventions from a systems perspective. So what I've got on this slide is just a very simple kind of outline of the different elements that make up a local alcohol environment. Um, so we've got different kind of groups of people, we've got different organizations, and then in green I've got different types of interventions that we're, we're interested in. This is not meant to be a comprehensive map by any means, but just to give a kind of a sense or a flavor of what's going on within the alcohol system. So I now want to look at what we might uh, do with a systems approach to evaluation by looking at one intervention in particular, and that intervention is called the late night levy. So the late night levy is a regulatory intervention, and what it does is if a local authority chooses to implement the intervention, they start charging retailers who sell alcohol between midnight and 6 a.m. an additional fee. And then that money that's raised through the levy goes to funding policing and management of the nighttime economy. So if we're interested in, in this intervention, a um, kind of traditional approach to evaluation might look at the way that the levy reduces things like police callouts or alcohol related um, hospital admissions or perhaps ambulance callouts. But we think that what we can do with a systems perspective is something quite different. So what I'm now gonna do is walk through a couple of the different types of questions that we might ask if we were applying the systems perspective. So the first thing we might try to do is understand how the levy interacts with all of those other interventions that are operating at the same time within the same system. So as I mentioned, the late night levy is a regulatory intervention, but it doesn't operate in isolation. So in fact, there are discounts on the fee for retailers who participate in other schemes. So one of these schemes is called PubWatch. And what PubWatch does is it brings together licensing officers, police officers, and retailers um, but it's funded by the alcohol industry. And so we can start to theorize that there are different uh, potential different goals and priorities between all of these very different groups within that one system. And so a systems evaluation might look at how do those competing priorities um, and kind of come into tension with one another within this broader context. So a systems perspective could also be used to look at the ways that the levy changes how organizations or individuals behave within the system. So the levy might facilitate new kinds of working. So for example, in some local authorities, the levy has been used to fund community safety patrols that are contracted out to private companies. What this does is it brings new actors into the system, and then they start to interact with all the other actors that are already in the system. So be it the licensing officers, the police, retailers, residents, or people that just come to the local authority for a good night out.
So what we might see is that as we see the community safety patrols on the street and interacting with retailers, retailers in response might change the ways that they manage their venues, how they sell drinks within their venues, and this is then going to have a change in the way that people drink within the venues. And that then is going to have impacts on things like antisocial behavior, perhaps on crime, and on various health impacts related to alcohol consumption. The final thing that we can look at with a systems perspective is how the levy might displace activities. So if retailers decide, actually, they don't want to pay the levy, they're then going to shut before midnight. What this does or what it might do, is change how people drink. So they might move, for example, to another local authority if it's a large metropolis area, or they might move drinking to the home environment, or they might simply shift to other venues that continue to open up late. And all of this is then going to have an impact on how alcohol is consumed and then the resulting health impacts of those consumption patterns. So these are just some of the ways that we might start to think about how we might evaluate the late night levy from a systems perspective. And hopefully, as has become obvious as I've been going through this, is that we're starting to ask very different questions from that more traditional evaluation approach. That a traditional approach would have just looked at perhaps one or two of these outcomes, whereas a systems perspective really um, encourages us to look more broadly at all the various different impacts that we might have or we might see, um, and also try to think about ones that we might not have planned um, or that the intervention designers might not have planned when designing that intervention. So I've now outlined an alcohol system and an example of how we might um, evaluate a specific intervention within that system. But I just want to formalize exactly what are we thinking that a systems approach adds to an evaluation. So the first thing it does is it allows us to create a system map. So a system map is simply a way to visualize all the different parts of the system, be it the people, the organizations, and the intervention, and map out exactly how they relate to each other and how those relationships can change. We can also use a system uh, perspective to, to think very holistically about that broader system. And what that allows us to do is look at the complex causal pathways and the alternative pathways. So how do we move from the intervention to an impact? And are there many different kind of alternative pathways to the same impact or many different pathways to many different impacts? Adding assistance perspective to evaluation also encourages us, us to look at that bigger picture. So that allows us to identify, for example, activities that swim against the tide. So that is, where are there potentially competing priorities or complete, uh, different um, kind of goals within a system, and where might that lead to tension? It also allows us to ask the question, whose interests are being served by specific approaches? And then it allows us to look at stepping stones. So where are there kind of smaller activities that could lead to larger initiatives? So where could we potentially have small inputs into systems that lead to much bigger changes? It also allows us to look at trade-offs. So if we prioritize resourcing X, what becomes deprioritized? And sometimes um, this is very obvious, but often it happens in much more kind of subtle ways, and it only becomes obvious when we take step back and kind of take this much more holistic picture. And then it also gives us a kind of more comprehensive understanding of impacts. Um, so both anticipated impacts, but also those that are potentially unanticipated when we design interventions, and gives us an understanding of what amplifies and dampens those impacts. And then finally, a systems perspective might also allow us to look at what explanations are transferable from one area to another. So by getting a better understanding of how the context um, and the broader system context interacts with the intervention, we might be able to kind of glean findings that are useful to transfer from one local setting to another local setting. So this was just a basic introduction into how we can start thinking in a new way. And this is this way we're calling systems thinking. Um, and we see a value in applying a systems perspective to many types of evaluation questions. But we think that in the local setting, the first thing you might want to do is ask yourself, what value do you think, if any there is, of adding a systems perspective to an evaluation? At the very least, we think it's always useful to consider how an intervention fits within the wider system, and then start to consider how its impacts might be modified by the wider system. As I described in the presentation, there are many different types of approaches to systems thinking, which require different levels of technical expertise and resource. And in this presentation, I've outlined an example that uses mainly qualitative approaches. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Thank you very much for watching.